You're listening to NFRN The Drive, your place for NFRN, NASCAR, and motorsport news. Hello again, everybody. Colin Denton here with another episode of NFRN The Drive. We are getting set to go racing in the NFRN All-Star Race, pitting some of the best NFRN Elite Cup Series drivers that we've had over the past season and a few races. Going to a new track on the schedule, Green Valley Super Speed Ring, which shows a lot of speed and a lot of fun racing that we could expect for both this race and the next week when we have it for all 42 drivers in a points paying race. We're going to get to that uh, in a few moments, but first we do want to take a look at the craziness that was the Grand Detour race in the NFRN Amateur Cup Series that we've had last week. It started off with Robert Harrison and Anthony Lopez leading the charge to the green flag. And they were pretty clean for a while, and then green flag pit stops happened. This is something we didn't see on pit road. Griffin Lynn got into the back of Justin Robeck. That's why both of those drivers lost multiple laps. Jake Thomas, along with three other cars, stayed on track. Chris, Chris Harley, one of them, but gets into Justin Robeck, who's already about six laps down at that point, as he's trying to get to pit road. And now here's where a lot of the drama happened. Now, you see here, there's Jake Thomas. He had the lead at the point. Eric Van Arsdale, he's there. He's supposed to be a lap down. And somehow he gets to the bottom of Jake Thomas, and Thomas needs to get down to pit road and get the fuel so that the cars behind him don't get advantage of him. But with Van Arsdale there, he pushes him into the end of pit road wall, and then that would lead to a penalty that we will uh, discuss later. And then... A few laps after that restart, a little bit of uh, close racing there sends a couple of cars off of their tires. Just Jason Thales and Anthony Lopez, Ryan Kendall also involved. But then it was all smooth sailing from there. John Gilbert on the pit strategy and getting it away from Robert Harrison, able to take the victory. And so he gets all the points there. Chris Harley just behind him in second place despite hit hitting that crash. Adam Kuhn and Barry Watson are able to put up really good performances as part-time drivers. Kenny Knox, the uh, Mirage winner in the Elite Cup Series, comes up with a top five. And you also had a lot of guys down here in the bottom half of the top ten that are guys we haven't seen a lot of this season. TJ Ball, Sparky the Sun Devil, Craig Martin, all guys that got their first career top tens in this race. And Jake Thomas would end up finishing 12th after not being able to get down on pit road. Van Arsdale with the last spot. So that will put Jake Thomas on a one-race probation for his aggressive driving and getting Van Arsdale to last place. Eric Van Arsdale had consideration for being penalized as well for interfering with Thomas as he was the leader and trying to get down to pit road with other cars behind him, trying to do the same strategy. However, because of an incident that occurred last year at Brooklyn's where Dejan Weeks, the eventual winner of Brooklyn's, who wrecked Van Arsdale, did not get penalized. Uh, the league basically gave Van Arsdale a free pass for uh, really getting screwed out of that situation as well. So he is able to walk away with just a slap on the wrist, but Thomas is getting that one race probation that will last up until that fifth Amateur Cup Series race at 8-Bowl, eight, eight which means the next two Elite Cup Series events he will be on probation for as well if he's able to qualify for those. And we are going to move on to some racing news first, but we do have something sad to report. Dan Gurney, the first drive to ever win at the top three levels of motorsports, died Sunday at the age of 86 after complications from pneumonia. Gurney had won seven IndyCar races, five NASCAR Cup races, and four Formula One races between 1962 and 1970, and also won the 24 Hours of Le Mans. At, in 1967, teamed up with A.J. Foyt. He was also one of the founders of CART, which sanctioned open wheel racing between 1979 and 2008. And beyond that, he was also a big innovator in racing and the automobile industry in general uh, helped create the winged bill that are used on race cars and uh, automobiles in general. And also was one of the first drivers to ever wear a full face helmet, really made innovations in safety and technology in the automobile industry. And we are sad to see him go, so we wish he and his family our condolences in this tough time. And now moving on, SB Nation is reporting that NASCAR could be instituting a budget cap on race teams. This is not a confirmed thing yet, and it is in fact something we, I believe we talked about last year, um, at least sometime in 2017, possibly on an episode of The, of the Drive. 
Um, so while details are slim about this rumor, a cap would attempt to reduce and manage the operating costs in a climate where it's really a sponsorship deficiency for teams, and they'd like to create better competition balance between these teams. Uh, Rob Kaufman, the race, chair, race Team Alliance chairman, says for any sp uh, professional sport to be viable long term, it needs to be a reasonable business to the team owner. In general, revenues within NASCAR are not going up, and like in any business, you have to address your costs. Uh, salary caps are uh, much used in various sports such as the NFL, NHL, and uh, many other sports. Um, so how this possibly could work would uh, be with regards to the allocations of certain uh, resources, which could include engineering, research and development, equipment, and crew members who travel to the races. But of course, this is still a rumor at the moment. And it was a pretty exciting weekend if your name was Christopher Bell from Norman, Oklahoma. He took home his second... And it was a pretty exciting weekend if your name was Christopher Bell from Norman, Oklahoma. He took home his second consecutive Chili Bowl title Saturday night in front of his home state crowd. And that took place as he was battling Kyle Larson for the lead at the front when Larson's engine suddenly blew up. And he had to limp his car to the middle of the racetrack. No caution coming out from that. So Bell worked his way out to a huge lead in that event. And then after the race, both drivers were actually kind of frustrated, or not frustrated, rather than disappointed, that they weren't able to race each other to the finish of that 55-lap feature. A former NASCAR team owner is going to be joining Team Penske. As their team manager, that is Robbie Benton. He will join the organization this year. He was a driver and owner from varying, uh, various racing series and will handle administrative and competition related duties for the team's Monster Energy Cup series and Xfinity series operations, which includes four full-time cars. He said, I've emulated many of Team Penske's values through my own programs, so it's especially meaningful to now be a part of this team. He was the part owner of RAB Racing in the Xfinity Series until that operation folded in 2015. The driving career of Scott Pruitt will come to an end at this year's Rolex 24 at Daytona. This is the final race of his 50-year driving career starting all the way back when he raced go-karts at the age of 8 in California. Pruitt has a record 60 wins in American sports car competition, including 5 Rolex 24 wins. That's tied for the most with Hurley Haywood. He's also won five titles under the Grand Am name and two under IMSA. And he says, what better way to say goodbye to the sport I love than at this revered place, surrounded by my respected peers and diehard fans. And Jeff Gordon will be joining some elite company as he will be inducted into the Motorsports Hall of Fame of America later this year. Gordon will be the lone NASCAR driver in this class. He'll join um, a, a class of various other motorsports figures in drag racing, road racing, among others, including John Batera, Carl Fisher, Howard Hughes, Fred Merkel, UE Pat Patrick, and Bob Tolius. And that induction ceremony will happen March 13th at the Shores Resort and Spa in Daytona Beach. Another driver that will be joining the Hall of Fame is Brian Clawson. He will be posthumously inducted into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame this year. Clawson passed away at the age of 27 in a racing accident. But he was a two-time champion and driver of the year during his lifetime, won 41 feature events. He will be inducted June 2nd in Knox Knoxville, Iowa, along with seven other inductees. Some additional silly season news. We now know where Joey Gase will be going next season. He'll be joining Go Green Racing in the Xfinity Series and driving their number 35 car. This team is a team that merged with Fast Lane Racing to become Go Fast Racing in the uh, Cup Series. Uh, but the, this sister team is now running back in the Xfinity Series. It originally closed down in 2014 to make that merge. And this is the team that Gase got his debut with in 2011 at his home track of Iowa. And he debuted in the Cup Series with Go Fast Racing. A Sparks Energy will be the primary sponsor for Gase, who left Jimmy Means Racing, seeking a cup raid after running four years with that team, but obviously not getting there yet. It could be a possibility that Go Fast Racing expands to a two-car team in 2019. 
And in the midst of learning that Ryan Truex wouldn't return to Hattori Racing Enterprises, we now know that Truex will be joining Colleague Racing in 2018, replacing Blake Cook in the number 11 Chevrolet in the Xfinity Series for 2018. Truex finished ninth in the uh, Camping World Truck Series standings and has back-to-back K&N -back Pro Series East titles. He's carrying sponsorship with Bar Harbor Seafood Products. And that allows team owner Matt Colleague to scale back its primary sponsorship from his own company, Leaf Filter. And Colleague told SiriusXM that he remains friends with Blake Cook and he will do anything possible to secure his future in racing. Rouse Fenway Racing will be putting the number 60 back on the racetrack in the Xfinity Series, driven by three of its four development drivers, Chase Briscoe, Austin Sindrick, and Ty Majeski, in partnership with Team Penske. This is the paint scheme that was unveiled uh, for this race team, which will run as the second car in the Xfinity Series alongside Ryan Reed in the number 16. And some good news for a team that's looking for some funding, JD Motorsports says that Dr. Pepper Snapple Group brands will sponsor their race cars in 2018. That Those brands include Sundrop and Canada Dry Ginger Ale. They will be on all of the race cars as an associate sponsor for the season. The company first sponsored the team in 2009 on board the uh, JD's number 01 Chevrolet. And team owner Johnny Davis said, this team has had a great relationship with Sundrop in the past, and I'm happy to have their support for what will be JDM's best season to date. Dalton Sargent's going to be joining GMS Racing in 2018, piloting their number 25 Chevrolet Silverado truck. In his ARCA career, Sargent picked up four wins, a pole, 20 top fives, and got the runner-up spot in 2017 to Austin Terrio. He also has 18 K&N Pro Series starts between both divisions with one win, two poles, and 10 top fives. Sargent has made six truck starts, including the final two races last season. He has a best finish of ninth at this level. And finally, Noah Gragson will get some primary sponsorship for the full season of 2018 with Safe Light Auto Glass. Gragson finished 10th in the truck series standings last year, including earning his first career victory at Martinsville company will also be an associate sponsor for Harrison Burton during his nine races with Kyle Busch Motorsports. And Safe Flight was the full-time sponsor for uh, Ben Rhodes at Thor Sport Racing last year and with Rico Abreu with the same team in 2016. And as we approach the start of this event, there are a couple other NFRN tidbits that we'd like to run through. We'll start off with a pretty tentative idea that's still in the planning and consideration process. The NFRN would like to run a 24-hour event. Now, details of how this would operate are pretty scarce at this point, including what track would be run and what type of race car as well. But uh, essentially, it would be a team of three to five drivers that would rotate and look to win a 24-hour event. And this could be also something that goes for charity, but of course, this is something that is just in consideration. Um, this would definitely be something that's run at the conclusion of season two. And so obviously there's a lot of planning that goes into this in advance. So that's why we're pitching the idea early, but at this point signups are not open. However, to gauge interest in seeing how many people would be interested in running this, we have included a link in the description that was utilized when at the beginning of the season, when people were looking for teams to run in season two. We'll use the same tool to find people teams, um, help them get something going if they are able to sign up for this whenever it does open up. Um, and there's few restrictions on how you can uh, run these teams. Um, if you are running in a team now and you want to create that in this event, you can do that. If you want to split off and go to someone else, you can do that in this event. If you're an independent, you're allowed to do this as well. All you have to do is be an, act, an active driver in the NFRN um, in some capacity, full-timer, part-time dr truck driver. If you aren't a part-timer at this point, signups are always open. Uh, that link is also in the description. So you can utilize that as well to enter this event, um, but you have to do that before uh, you enter this event. And so anyone that does want to run in this event must be signed up in some capacity before entering the event. And by doing this um, on the forums, you are allowed to exchange emails so that teams can be confirmed. And I do recommend that people utilize the private messaging feature 
to exchange those emails because I don't think people did that the first time and now their emails are just out there floating. So I do recommend that if you don't want your email to be seen, you do some private messaging to uh, establish a connection with these other drivers. Um, so that way you can uh, have someone designated to sign the team up when that does open up. And if it does open up, uh, we will see if this is able to come to fruition. But um, something that we just want to consider at the moment and uh, something that could be a lot of fun if it comes up in the near future. We've also made some changes to the NFRN statistics. Now, uh, if you ever saw the pages that were incorporated into the website that showed the running positions or rather finishing positions, uh, some of the all-time stats of every driver, those were all clumped together to start with. We've now split that up so that every single driver has their own page. And so it should be easier to read and include some new information about uh, how uh, a certain driver performs at a track type or at a specific track. Should be something that's a lot more navigatable and uh, a lot easier to look at and really just shows how a driver performs throughout a season. So. In the Elite and Amateur Cup Series, that is updated. The Truck Series still being developed, but it is coming um, and should be a little bit easier to develop because it only has two races run so far um, in this uh, season. So we'll have those all updated very soon, but uh, you can take a look at those. Those are, all, those are also in the description, and those will be updated as the season progresses. And we do have another thing you should be in to know about. We have a new, new Discord, and no, that isn't being said incorrectly. We've actually merged our own Discord server with a, another group that is kind of a conglomerate of different leagues operated by other YouTube channels. Uh, it's a combination between the ASCA and our lands leagues. You might uh, recognize ASCA because if you have been following this channel, I am now commentating the second of the ASCA uh, series. So that might be where you've heard of that. But there is a bit of crossover between the drivers of these uh, other leagues. And um, we are going to move our operations over there for the sake of activity. And um, at this point, it's been kind of slow on our own server. Uh, but this is going to allow us to expand a little bit, maybe get a few more drivers into our own league. And so hopefully it will be uh, not an inconvenience. It will just be the same in terms of uh, posting different news and keeping up to date while we are not doing episodes of Drive or any racing. So if you want to, you can go to that new uh, server. That link is now in the description. Uh, if you were already on the old server, uh, I recommend that you make the move over there because the uh, old one will be, uh, we won't call it shut down, but I will take away permissions to post messages. So essentially it will be shutting down, just not being deleted. If you want to keep up to date, you can either click on the link down in the description or the link is also on that server now. And that is where all activity from here on out will be posted at. But now it is time to get into NFRN All-Star Competition. The main feature will take place in about half an hour, but before that we'll have the NFRN All-Star Open where four new drivers will join the field, those that have not won a race in NFRN competition and they will join the field making it a main feature event featuring 16 drivers and we'll see which one of those will get to inherit the first all-star race champion title we hope to see you next time on nfr and the drive but until then my name is colin denton with rvn good night and good riddance